All right, everybody. Uh, I'm back. I got uh, I got some names for you for the Fabtastic Five. It's July second. Uh, I'm excited. I hope you guys are as well. Uh, there's two names here that uh, are repeat offenders, <laughs> if you will. Uh, so they, the, I'll go over them pretty quickly here. Um, the rest of the guys uh, are new to the list. So uh, I'm going to start with James Paxton, 65% roster on Yahoo, 38% on ESPN. Um, still, all the good peripherals apply to James Paxton. He still has looked uh, very good, has a good K rate, has a good walk rate, has a good whiff rate. So all those things still apply. Um, only thing that has changed between last week and this week is he's added another good start against the Toronto Blue Jays. So that is seven and two thirds uh, that he went out. No earned runs allowed, seven strikeouts, 0.65 whip. So he did look very, very good, very competent there. Again, with James Paxton, the only thing that may hold him back is his Asian injury concerns. Um, so um, be cautious. But I do believe that James Paxton, again, is worth a fab bid here. The other guy that is, uh, that's is that been on the list before, Ezekiel Tovar, again, not much has changed. The peripherals still look pretty bad for uh, Mr. Tovar, which is, uh, which is a shame. But he, uh, he continues to produce, so that is not a shame. He, he's still hitting, hitting the ball in games, and the, the production is there uh, over the past week. He's uh, hit 391 with an 1136 OPS uh, during that span of time. He has seven runs, two home runs, nine RBIs, and a stolen base. So he is, you know, contributing to those counting stats as well um, in a Rockies offense that hasn't looked as bad as um, maybe some people had thought. But again, the peripherals don't look great. But since he plays half of his games in cores, maybe he can overperform some of those. Um, again, that is Ezekiel Tovar. Jordan Hicks is the next guy I have on the list here. Um, somebody who, as of late, has looked really good, and as of late, and for the season, his peripherals do look really, really good. Um, so 57% rostered on Yahoo and 14% on ESPN. Again, that is Jordan Hicks. Um, since uh, June 19th, it is uh, July now, but since June 19th, he has had three appearances. They've all been saves. Um, he's looked good. Since uh, kind of inheriting that closer role, I know that Helsley's been out, Gallegos has been shaky. Uh, just going to read off some peripherals for you here. He has been excellent. Um, 89th percentile in XBA, 92nd percentile in average exit velo, 88th percentile in whiff rate, 95th percentile in K rate, and 100th percentile in fastball velo. So he is pumping it in there, and he's looking good while doing it. He has five saves on the year now. And I think that the Cardinals are kind of looking to shake things up a little bit and uh, maybe find some consistency. I think that that may lead to um, Jordan Hicks becoming the, the closer for the rest of the year. I guess we'll see about that uh, because the managing there in St. Louis has been um, odd, to say the least. But, um, you know, Jordan Hicks has looked good. And I think that he can hold down that closer spot, even though his uh, actual numbers have not looked as good as his peripherals. Tommy Pham, the next guy here, 24% roster on, on Yahoo, 5% on ESPN. Um, nine stolen bases, nine home runs, uh, 285 average, and a 351 on base percentage with an 865 OPS on the year. So he's looked really good, and the peripherals back it up as well. This is another guy that's just been crushing it. Um, so... 98th percentile average exit velo, 90th percentile in max exit velo, 93 percentile hard hit right, 97th percentile in XBA, 96th percentile X slug, and a 92 percentile barrel rate. This guy's stack cast page is just, it's all red top to bottom. Um, and like I said, the production uh, on the field has been there as well. He's looked pretty good. Um, I think he will continue to play well, especially if these expected numbers and um, kind of the peripherals stay um, high at the at the rate that they are. Um, so that is Tommy Pham. Last guy here, um, nothing special. He's not going to blow your doors off by any means, but it is a starting pitcher that's available here at July 2nd um, off of the waiver wire fab or free agent, um, you know, whatever term we want to use. But uh, Ranger Suarez, 63% rostered on Yahoo and 42% on ESPN. Um, 
in 51 innings pitched this year, he's looked pretty good. He has 50 strikeouts, a 3-1-8 ERA, a 1-2-0 whip, six quality starts, two wins. Uh, so he's going pretty deep into games, as the quality starts say. Only two wins, which is kind of disappointing. But uh, the Phillies have been kind of disappointing on the year. So maybe uh, if their play improves, uh, a few more wins can come his way. Again, he's not going to blow your doors off. He allows a, a pretty decent amount of hard contact. Um, his saving grace is that he does have a 52.1% ground ball rate. So a lot of the run prevention, home run prevention is mitigated because he does have that really good um, ground ball rate um, that may lead to a little bit of an elevated whip, which is just kind of be the, the case here with Ranger Suarez. Um, although I will say that he is pitching against the Nationals right now, and uh, he hasn't looked fantastic. I believe that he's through four innings and he's given up four runs. Um, so we'll see how the rest of this game shakes out. But um, he's a guy that kind of reminds me of Bryce Elder. Um, similar pitchers, high ground ball rates, they kind of live off of that. Um, might have elevated whips, but the ERA should be relatively decent. I think you could see like a 3-6, 3-7 end of year ERA with uh, Ranger Suarez, and you'd be pretty happy with that, especially, again, since he's available here July 2nd um, in the season. But that's all for me today. I will see you guys back here next week. Bye.